Hi families, in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to homeschool without a curriculum. It can be done. So my name is Felicia Wright. I am a family education consultant and teacher and I left the classroom and now I homeschool my kids and I help other families do the same thing. So uh, I wanna talk about what you can do if you don't want to use a curriculum. So first things first, I want to let you in on the secret. A lot of teachers don't use a curriculum. I know, I know it's like, what? Yeah, we don't use um, curriculum in the classroom. At least I didn't for several years and I'll, that's due in large part to the district that I taught in is cheap and couldn't afford curriculum. So they're like, you guys figure it out. So for most of the time I taught three of the years, I did not have a curriculum. So me and my team and my team are the other teachers that I taught with, meaning we all taught first grade and they taught first grade, we'd get together and put curriculum together. So <clears throat> you can definitely do this. Teachers do it all the time and I'm gonna let you in on the tools of the trade on how to do that. So as teachers, when we didn't have a curriculum and they're like, okay, teach these kids, make sure you hit everything. What we started with was Common Core and before you click off the video and be like, I hate Common Core, that's not how we used it. Common Core, the, we use the standards. So the standards for that every first grader should know by the end of the year. Standards for every sixth grader that should know by the end of the year. So we used those standards and looked at what they needed to know. So in general, uh, I'm just coming up with a, I know one, some of these standards off the top of my head. Um, one would be first grader needs to know, needs to be able to identify a main idea and sporting details within a text. So we knew that that was a standard and they, we had to teach that. So we would pick a theme for the month. So if you're a homeschooler at home and you're like, I don't know what they're even supposed to know, check out the standards and that's a good jumping off point. If they don't know it by the end of whatever grade they're in, it's not the end of the world. It's just a good reference point to know like, oh, this is ideally what they should know. If they don't, it's okay. We're homeschoolers anyway. We got it. We'll figure it out along the way. So <clears throat> once you have those standards and you know what a typical first grader would know, I would suggest you pick a theme for the month. And this is what we did as teachers. We'd pick a theme. So this month at the time of this recording is October. And our theme would be insects, spiders, bats, because it's Halloween this month. And it was just typical for us. So say we wanted to learn, teach the kids about bats. So we would create a bats unit. So for example, we chose bats and we would come up with reading lessons, sometimes math lessons, and then writing lessons. So for example, we would find a bats passage and we would read it whole group because this is first grade. So we'd read it whole group and then the kids would break off and read it on their own. And they would have to identify the main idea of the passage because so say the passage is about bats, but it's, excuse me, specifically about echolocation. So they would have to identify, oh, the main idea of this is echolocation. And then some of the supporting facts are blah, 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 blah. And that's how we would hit certain standards and certain themes. So as a homeschooler, if you're not sure where to start, pick out those standards and see what you want to teach. But I would suggest going over a theme for the month. So if you want to learn about spiders for the month or as of the time of this recording, my daughter really wants to know about how um, weathermen predict the, the weather because right now it just got super cold and I was like, oh, it's gonna be 60 degrees. She's like, how do you know that? So we're gonna go over how weathermen know that it's going to be such and such degrees the next day. So you pick the theme and then you start identifying what you want to learn within that theme. So the rep, the, example that I gave was main idea supporting details. So I'm in the process of pulling um, information on how weathermen predict the weather and how you can tell the weather and all that stuff. So if you have a theme or your child has decided, oh, I want to learn about this, then you pull out and extract certain lessons from that theme. So even with going back to the spider unit, they read 
or spiders or bats. They read something about bats, they identify a main idea and um, supporting details. And then you can also incorporate math into that. And there's a variety of ways that you can incorporate math. So it could be you have little bat bats, bat erasers. I used to do that a lot in classes. Um, we get bat erasers and then they would group them and create equations with them and all sorts of things. So you're still keeping with the bats. And if you want to go into writing, they can write a story about a bat or it could be a nonfiction, what they've learned about bats. So there's a variety of things that you can do to incorporate that theme into their learning at home. And as teachers, we did not create all the worksheets and all the different things that you see at home that comes home. So <clears throat> I know like so far, like I've said like, oh, you do all this stuff, but I'm sure you're wondering like, well, where do I get all this stuff? So you can either create some of this stuff, you go to the library, or you can go to a website called Teachers Pay Teachers. And honestly, that is what all teachers use in the classroom. We use Teachers Pay Teachers, especially at least in the district that I worked for where they didn't, um, they didn't pay for curriculum because they couldn't afford it. Um, so we go to Teachers Pay Teachers and you'd be surprised how much content on there is actually free. So we would pull content related to bats in reading, writing, and math, and sometimes social studies or whatever, um, and pull that and put it all together in a unit. And then we would um, outline it on a calendar. It's like, okay, this week we're going to be hitting main idea really hard and some writing concepts. And then next week we're going to be doing this, that, and the third. And it's all related to bats. And usually our themes would last two to three weeks. So you can do that at home on a calendar, write out what you want to teach, what your theme is for the week, and do it. And it's really, really simple. And what I want to tell you is that don't get caught up in the like, am I doing this right? As long as learning's involved, that's all that matters. You're homeschooling, so you have all the time in the world. Um, I know my children, um, they, they don't take, they don't really necessarily have summer vacation. So they learn throughout the course of the entire year. So <clears throat> make sure that you are following a theme and hitting some points that you really want to um, learn about. I'll put it in the description below um, a link to my homeschooling planner if you need a planner to, to chart all that out. I'll also put a link to um, the Common Core standards. And again, I know people hear Common Core and they go running for the hills and rightfully so because some of the stuff we had to teach was crazy. But it is a good reference point of, okay, this is what ideally my child should learn by the end of the school year. So just check it out. You don't have to follow it verbatim, but it's definitely super, super helpful. So if you do not have a big budget to buy one of these super expensive curriculums, this is more than doable and it's actually fairly simple. And it's, I think it's almost easier because if you get behind in a curriculum, like, oh, I'm behind, I need to catch up. It's like, it's, it's not like that. You do things on your own time. So homeschooling without a curriculum can definitely be done. I almost say it's, it's a little easier in some respects because the children are actually more interested in it. There's more buy-in because they're learning about the things that they want to learn about. So keep that in mind. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Let me know, are you homeschooling without a curriculum and how do you pull together resources? I would love to um, hear what you do and then share with other people that are um, homeschooling but without a curriculum. And this is a great cheap option for families out there because I know it's a really trying time. So I hope that was helpful. Please like and subscribe to this video. If you need other resources on how to homeschool, definitely check out my homeschooling jumpstart guide in the comments below. And then I also have a link to my homeschooling planner in the comments below. So uh, I hope that was helpful and I'll catch you next time. Bye.